This is the second revision lecture on section 2.4, consumer products. And in the second lecture, we're going to look at fragrances and skincare products. In the first section on fragrances, we're going to concentrate on essential oils. So what do we mean by the term essential oils? Essential oils are volatile, non-water soluble aroma compounds extracted from plants by steam distillation. Now this picture may remind you of when we did this in class. So in this picture we're extracting essential oils from some orange peel. So we heat up some water so it turns into steam and the steam passes through the orange peel, heating up the compounds in the orange peel. The essential oils are volatile so they readily evaporate and turn into gas and are carried up through this pipe and when they hit the condenser, wet paper towel condenser, they cool down, condense back to liquid as does the steam, condenses back into water and the water and the essential oils floating top of them uh, are collected here. Now, the essential oils are a mixture of many different organic compounds, things like aldehydes, ketones, but one of the major components that we haven't come across before are the compounds called terpenes. So, what are terpenes? So they're unsaturated compounds formed by joining together isoprene units. Notice the word enes, so like alkenes, so it's telling you it's unsaturated. And they're formed, as it says, by joining together isoprene units. So what's an isoprene unit? Well, the proper name for an isoprene unit is 2-methyl-butyl-1,3-diene. So four carbons, there's the buta. 1,3-diene, so I've got two double bonds and the 1 and the 3 position and then a methyl group on the second. So that's your isoprene unit. And make sure you're able to draw that. Okay. So that's an isoprene unit or 2-methyl-butyl-1,3-diene. Okay. So these units can be joined together uh, in lots of different ways to make a wide variety of terpenes, although we'll only look at some fairly simple terpenes. So here's a terpene by, formed by joining together two isoprene units uh, and I've coloured one isoprene unit red and one isoprene unit blue here. Notice that uh, you've lost some of the double bonds. Just don't expect to see the same double bond pattern in the terpenes as it was in the isoprene unit. So we have lost some double bonds in the joining together process. So this is called the linear terpene because they're joined kind of head to tail. You can also get cyclic terpenes. <coughs> so here's a cyclic terpene called limonene. Now, two common questions you get asked in the exam are firstly, how many isoprene units are joined together in this terpene? Well, to answer that question, all you have to do is count the number of carbon atoms. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Each isoprene unit has 5 carbons. So, if it's 10 carbons, it must be 2 isoprene units. And if it's 15 carbons, it would be 3 isoprene units, etc. Also, sometimes you're asked to circle an isoprene unit within the terpene. So, your isoprene unit should contain five carbon atoms, but it can't just be any old five carbon atoms. If you remember what the isoprene unit looked like, there's always one carbon which is joined to three other carbons. So, try and identify that carbon first of all. So, for example, here, this carbon here is joined to one, two, three other carbon atoms. 
and then we make that one to make it our fifth okay so and that's our carbon which is bonded to the three other carbons and then the other isoprene unit well here's our carbon here which is joined to one two three and there's the fifth carbon atom in the isoprene unit so it's always kind of like this y shape you know so i kind of skew with y in the isoprene unit dot five carbon atoms in a row right. sometimes what happens in nature this terpene is then further oxidized so for example this is menthol which can be extracted by <coughs> steam distillation of peppermint and you see this has now lost its unsaturation uh, because it's been oxidized and it's got an OH group so the oxidation of terpenes can produce alcohols aldehydes ketones which can uh, add to the the fragrance now these essential oils have lots of uses in society uh, because they smell nice they're used a lot in perfumes they're also used for adding to household products give them a nice smell for example say cleaning products you know the lemon or minty smell you might get in cleaning products they are due to essential oils they can be added to food as flavorings so there's lots of uses for these essential oils <coughs> okay let's move on now and look at skin care in skin care and what we're covering in higher chemistry really we're focusing on limiting the damage to the skin caused by the sun or to be specific limiting the damage caused by the ultraviolet radiation being emitted from the sun now ultraviolet radiation produces substances called free radicals and the chain reaction caused by the free radicals can do a lot of damage to the skin and uh, can contribute to the formation of skin cancers now all free radical chain reactions have a three-step process an initiation step a propagation step and a termination step in the initiation step you produce free radicals so it initiates the process and it be the ultraviolet light from the sun which initiates it so for example say it uh, the ultraviolet light can interact with the water molecules in your skin and it breaks one of the OH covalent bonds so in such a way not that uh, in such a way that both atoms involved in the bond gets one of the electrons back and we produce an OH free radical and an H free radical so this dot represents a free radical so a free radical is a very unstable very very reactive substance so you then get a whole series of propagation reactions involving the free radicals for example uh, let's see an H free radical might react with another water molecule to form H2 and an OH free radical note in the propagation step you end up with the same number of free radicals as you started with so I had one free radical here one free radical here this OH minus this sorry this OH free radical may react with another water molecule <coughs> producing maybe hydrogen peroxide uh, what's that leave me with H2O2 plus a hydrogen free radical so again no change in number of free radicals but these reactions can cause an awful lot of damage and they can go on for a long time until the concentration of free radicals uh, is such that we get some termination reactions when you get a termination reaction two free radicals can react with each other so you might get an OH free radical 
reacting with an H3 radical to form the stable compound H2O. <coughs> so, there are the three major steps you can get in a free radical chain reaction. An initiation, in which the number of free radicals increase. A propagation, in which the number of free radicals stays the same. And then termination steps, where the number of free radicals decrease. And as I said, a lot of damage to the skin can be uh, can happen during all these propagation steps. So, how can we limit the damage caused to the skin by this ultraviolet radiation? Well, as you know, when you go to the sun, you should wear sun cream or sunblock. And the sunblock contains a range of chemicals designed to reduce the damage caused by the ultraviolet radiation. <coughs> Firstly, it will contain substances that absorb UV radiation, so the UV radiation never reaches your skin. Now, it's unlikely that it will be a high enough concentration of these substances to stop all the UV radiation reaching your sun, reaching your skin, but it will significantly reduce it. And they also contain substances called free radical scavengers. So this will minimise the damage caused once the ultraviolet radiation has caused the production of free radicals in your skin. So a free radical scavenger is a substance which will react to a free radical to produce a stable compound, hence reducing the number of free radicals <coughs> and hence reducing the amount of damage that can cause. So some of the UV radiation is absorbed by the sunblock and that which gets through uh, the damage caused by it is minimised by the presence of free radical scavengers in the sun cream. Okay, so four things you should be able to do by the end of this section. Describe how essential oils are extracted from plants. Draw an isoprene unit and state how many units are in a given terpene. Describe what a free radical is and write equations for the three steps in a free radical reaction initiation, propagation, termination. And explain how sunblock can prevent, stroke, minimise damage from UV light.